It's very important to link your students' background knowledge and experiences with the reading as much as, as possible. As we were saying earlier, make those connections. When we talk about increasing literacy for our students as they get older, it's very important to know the research so that we can combat it. So although currently great effort is put into early literacy intervention, unfortunately, the research shows us that children from low SES backgrounds show an actual decline, a deceleration of reading skills in the later elementary grades and middle. So why is this? What happens is as the content becomes increasingly uh, more rigorous and more dense with difficult words that may be unknown, it becomes more abstract. And so unless we're very intentional about continuing to build a student's comprehension skills, that is why this deceleration can occur. That higher density of unknown words, of course, has a connection to comprehension and can lead to a decreased understanding of the text as well. All the more reason we need to proactively address this before the decline occurs. We want to focus on increasing literacy skills, but especially just ensuring that we don't forget the importance of direct instruction around vocabulary and reading comprehension. This is critical as students stop learning to read and transition to reading to learn right around that third grade age. So, as I've said many times before, direct explicit instruction is so key. It's beneficial to all students, but especially those who come from low SES communities and may not have had the opportunity to gain these skills more uh, subtly over time. When the skills haven't been pre-taught or they haven't had access to pre-school, we need to be very intentional and explicit about our instruction. Seventh grade poor readers from bilingual low SES backgrounds have been shown through the research to benefit from direct instruction that emphasizes phonological awareness and is connected to literacy. The research shows us when we are direct and explicit, students benefit. Now, with our students as they get older, it can be tricky to figure out what's motivating. So, whereas the bag of tricks seems to be never ending like Mary Poppins' bag in elementary, we need to be more thoughtful and innovative as our students get older. Organize book clubs. Allow your students to really drive the selection of the book. Think about incentives. I have a, a colleague who is a principal who organized a dunk tank for the end of the year. And if a certain number of books were read by a student, they got a certain number of uh, balls to throw at the target and watch you know, their principal get dunked. And that certainly led to the highest number of books read in that school uh, ever before. Um, ensure that students have access for uh, t taking books home, whether it's through your school library or access to community libraries. And make sure that your school library has engaging texts. It's very important, and thankfully, now we have access to really great, engaging, age-appropriate text that can be presented at different reading levels. So we don't need to prevent or somehow limit the choices for students who maybe are older but still reading at lower levels. Another great way to get students engaged, and it has a win-win situation, is through a cross-age tutoring program. So there was a great study by Nepal that actually paired ninth grade struggling readers, some of whom were bilingual, with struggling second and third grade readers. As the ninth graders prepared to read the text selected by the second and third graders, they were actually accessing content that they felt more confident with because it was at a lower reading level, improved their fluency, but they were motivated to do so because they knew there were kids who were looking forward to hearing this story. And then the second and third graders benefited from having this peer who they looked up to, who was modeling great reading, and the literacy skills of both groups were increased. No one likes to feel inadequate, and so it's so important that we recognize the vulnerabilities of our students 
who do come from low SES backgrounds. Many of our struggling readers don't like to read because they don't want to have that feeling of inadequacy or frustration. They may have a perception that good readers read something once and comprehend it. So it's important that we model our own struggles. I still have to sometimes go back and reread a paragraph or even a page or even a chapter because I found that my mind's wandering to something else. And so I make a point to model that for my students and, and show them that even their teachers, all readers, have to go back at times. For students who um, maybe need this reassurance, just model what it's like to struggle. Reading is going to increase their vocabulary, and so we want to make sure that any hurdles such as frustration or feelings of inadequacy don't prevent them from reading. It's also an important strategy to support written language. So as we mentioned, many students from low socioeconomic status bring this casual language register to school while writing takes place in a more formal language register. So we need to be very explicit in discussing how we transition and even do activities to sort of translate between the more casual language that they use outside of school and the more formal language expected within. Another trick for supporting written language is just to help students to track. This actually can benefit all students and certainly not to say that all students from low SES have visual tracking issues, but there is an increased likelihood. So little things like taking something as inexpensive as an index card or ruler, but I find it more fun if you can splurge and get some transparent um, paper so that the kids get to choose a color and using that for tracking. We also can really find great gains with our students through using wordless books and getting them to add the words to the story. If the anxiety level is so high when text is presented, let's remove that and start building a child's literacy and story grammar and adding their own written language that's accessible. We can benefit from a lot of the technology that can help us to make text more accessible. So perhaps having students use software which can provide text definitions. So that way, instead of a feeling of inadequacy, they can simply click on a word and have the definition there for them. Of course, we know the best strategies are to expand upon that definition, but at least it won't prevent them from going further through their reading. So to summarize, the formal explicit instruction does not erase the influence of socioeconomic status, but we do need to be very thoughtful knowing that there's additional risk factors for many of our students from low income families. From their first literacy lessons, our students from low socioeconomic status are often the underdog. It's not a level playing field. So what we want to make sure we do is to work against those factors. Students will need extra support to learn optimally at school. By reducing stress, we can free up brain capacity for learning. And so it's extremely important to increase contextual clues.